Hello everyone and welcome to part two of me making this ginormous hammer. Uh, if you want, you can go view part one if you haven't already, or you could not do that. I mean, you can do whatever you want with your life. Uh, but it might make more sense because last time I was left with the conundrum of trying to figure out how I'm going to lodge a, the stick inside of this giant hammer to be able to actually carry it around and actually make it into a hammer. Um, because my previous plan wasn't going to work because the hammer just got so big and heavy so i went around looking at different materials that i had trying to figure out something that i could make to make a frame or a structure inside of the hammer the other thing i was trying to do was trying to make it so that i could detach the stick so it wasn't permanently attached so i could store it in two parts um, because it was already going to be huge and so it would really help with storage space if i could separate them so i was looking around and i found this so mom helped me cut it up with a bread knife and then i was able to make it into this block using a uh, paper weight and another weight uh, one of them is more expensive than the other uh, but i was able to glue them all together using just regular Malmers glue. <laughs> uh, it didn't really matter too much, we just need to make sure they didn't move while we cut them. And I'm really proud of this shot, isn't it so cool looking, like aesthetically pleasing? I thought it was really nice. But anywho, after gluing them together, I pressed them together with my weights on top, and then I proceeded to try and figure out what shape I was going to need to cut this block into after it dried. Uh, so I had this little triangle, and I thought that it was going to be the correct size to uh, stick into the hammer and use it as a uh, reference for how I needed to cut this block, but after trying to put it inside of the hammer, I determined that it was a little bit too big, and so I had to cut it down a little bit in order to make it fit inside and then be able to use it as a template to trace onto my styrofoam where I needed to cut. So the idea is that I'm going to cut this wedge of styrofoam and stick it inside the hammer. Then I'm going to cut out a tube, uh, or not a tube, well I mean it will be a tube, but then I'm going to carve out a cylindrical hole for the stick to then go into. And hopefully it'll be tight enough that I can slide the stick in and out for storage. And then I can store it easily. So, uh, yes, uh, right now I'm doing a patterny thing, but it doesn't really matter because I didn't end up using this. Uh, I was trying to make a cool end cap for the uh, ends of the hammer, but really the only reason I kept this part in here was this. I can figure out how to do a fancy face blur effect in my program. <laughs> oh yeah, that works way better. Yes, the handsaw worked much better than the bread knife, so if you ever find yourself cutting styrofoam into a giant triangle to stick inside a hammer, uh, definitely use the saw and not the bread knife. Yay! The other thing is <laughs> why my mother was cutting it and not me, is I had a disproportional fear of cutting it wrong, and mom is also quite the crafter, and 
master of all things cutting. Uh, so yeah, she did it. But see, you can see the inside where I stuck that giant uh, triangle thing inside of the hammer, and that's gonna give it structure, and that's gonna be the spot where I drill a hole to put the hammer in. So once I secured it in there very good with hot glue, um, I didn't think it was gonna go anywhere, but you know, better safe than sorry, right? So I had to put these blocks because again, the hammer does not lay flat because it's a triangle, uh, but no regrets on the triangle part. It's, it's gonna look awesome. Uh, so I used that one inch drill bit thingy to drill a hole into the bottom. I also put a little bit of cardboard because um, I thought that might help. I don't know if it helped, but I put a little bit of cardboard on top of the bottom part there. So uh, luckily my pole was exactly an inch in diameter exactly an inch in diameter so I just used that drill bit cut a hole and uh, I think I actually this was right after I burned myself really really bad with the hot glue because I was trying to stick foam into the hole because I kind of had to cushion it and I put hot glue in the hole and I stuck my finger down there and it, yeah it was it was it really really hurt uh, but anywho uh, this is um, more cat as you can see which I thought you would appreciate so I moved the camera and uh, this is me making a top for the hammer uh, which was a little bit more complicated because I actually put the flukes just a tiny bit too high so like the top of the hammer was bumping into the sides of the flukes and it just didn't look good so I actually had to do two foam layers to kind of try and cover that up uh, I wish I would have had those two flukes down a little bit farther on the hammer but then I would have had made the hammer even bigger so yeah I guess I just needed to make different parts bigger anyway uh, it, nobody can really notice but uh, I will notice <laughs> anyway you don't care about any of that I'm cutting out more foam I'm cutting out giant foam sides for uh, see those parts that are still open on the sides of the hammer yeah so I'm cutting out giant triangles to put on the ends of the hammer because David vetoed my little end cap idea that I worked for on for like an hour. Uh, so instead I was making giant, um, I honestly have no idea what I'm doing right here. <laughs> uh, I'm sure it's important for something. It looks like I'm, I'm patterning out something. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. This, this was a hassle. This took a long time. So I am patterning out the bottom portion of the hammer. Remember how I said I was going to put one more portion on the bottom of the hammer and a place for this uh, really tiny hole for the stick to go through? Yeah. So I'm making that tiny bottom portion of the hammer and this was a big hassle because I couldn't just cut out Okay, this is really hard to explain. I don't even know if I'm going to try to explain it, but basically I had to cut these pieces and fashion them together so they would look like that. Well, okay, that was a little fast, but you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about in a minute. But I had to make them different sizes. See how like one is way longer than the other and one is fat and squatty? That's actually the only way to get them to fit together because of curves and math. Uh, except I didn't do any math. I just did trial and error until I finally got it. So that is me finally cutting the pieces out of foam and I had to do the two different sizes of foam because that is what I put on the bottom because I have front pieces that are the black foam and side pieces that are the white foam and that's where these are going to stick. And this took a very long time there, see, you can see. All right, so now this is me sticking them on. Uh, so I will have a tiny hole at the bottom with which to stick my hammer, or not hammer, uh, to stick my stick pole into the bottom of the hammer. So I'm just hot gluing that together there. And uh, yeah, that's, that's just about it. I uh, also see that little uh, rod of foam. It's actually a small, thin triangle. I don't, I can't do shapes, guys. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to use that to, uh, 
put around the edges kind of as like a fringe you'll see in a second so i had a problem with the insides of the flukes of the hammer so i put some support there because they were kind of bendy and i didn't want them to be bendy when i was trying to stick the end plates on to the sides of the hammer and so i just put that little bit of support in there now this also took a disproportionately amount of long time. I actually have only finished half, I believe, as of recording this video. I've still only done half of this work. <laughs> so what I'm doing is I made a template, and if you guys want this template, I, I guess I can give it to you, make a link. If somebody wants it, just comment, uh, and I will link it in the description if somebody really wants it. But so I basically made this template for scales, and uh, yes, I will come back to that in a second because I'm doing something else now. <laughs> so remember how I said I was going to make a fringe? So I'm using this little fringy stuff. You can also get this at uh, either Hobby Lobby or Michael's. Most of them have this with the foam rolls in the foam section. And so I'm using this as a little fringe to kind of give it more, I don't know, texture, dimension, coolness covering up the ugly line i don't know uh but so that's what i'm doing there oh and dance break while the glue dries because the contact cement takes forever to dry so might as well have a dance break anywho once the contact cement dried then i was able to press it together because remember the contact cement you have to coat on both sides and then wait for 15 minutes and then stick it together and then that's the only way you can get it to work properly, especially when it's under extreme pressure, as it was in that uh, clip. So, this, back to the dragon scales. So, I made this dragon scale pattern, and then I basically just had to cut out a million scales. I found that the best way to do that, instead of tracing, which kind of uh, gave it... It, it, it led to more like indiscrepancies because you were not only you were tracing and then your tracing had little tiny discrepancies and then you were cutting out that tracing which gave you even more discrepancies so i figured out that i thought it was better to just glue the pattern piece oh uh, i made a little tiny thing and then i made a little hole in it um for the bottom and there's more cat yay oh there's the hole uh, and that's what the stick's going to ultimately go through. Uh, but anyway, I will tell you more about the best way to cut out scales in a moment, because don't worry, there's going to be a lot more of that. <laughs> so, uh, as you can see, I cut out giant triangles. So I used the 6 millimeter, no, 12. Wait, I'm confusing myself. No, I used the 6 millimeter foam. I doubled it up. And then it became 12 millimeter foam. Or it was 12 millimeter foam. Okay, now I can't remember. I'm really sorry. Okay, there's there's only a few sizes, okay? You can kind of tell. Um, so I used that on the edges uh, of the hammer and I'm also using it here. Uh, so basically because I used two layers of foam, I needed to make something to cover up that seam. So, this is me making something to cover up that seam, because half of crafting is just covering up ugly things and mistakes. So, <laughs> I held my blade at a around a 45 degree angle and cut chasms into the foam. And uh, you have to make sure your blade is really sharp for this, so I actually had to use a whole bunch of these blades and break a ton of them off in order to do this. And here is me that made this one side of the hammer, <laughs> except not the other side. So, yeah. I don't have an outtake for this one, so here's my cat. So me.